In this video, I will be demonstrating some of the predicate logic skills for Logic 2010. I will go through universal instantiation, existential generalization, universal derivation, as well as existential instantiation. In this first derivation, I will only be going through U, I, and E, G. So, let's start as normal. I start with show conclusion, and I take a look at what I have. The show line is a conditional, so I immediately know to start and assume CD, and then I can show the consequent. Now don't forget, if I ever forget what it is that I need to enter, I can just right-click into the box and it will give me all the options. I believe on a Mac you can hit Command-Click, and it will do the same thing. Now here, I have to show the existential GX and HX. So I know that to show this, I just need some instantiated version, so I'm just looking for G-alpha and H alpha. And of course, because it's a conjunction, I just need them separately. So I need G of something, and I need H of something, and they should be the same thing. Now, when I look at premise 1 and premise 2, they're both universals, so I should UI to match. And it's pretty straightforward. On line 2, I have FA, and over on premise 1, I have an FX, which can be changed to anything due to the universal. So I will universally instantiate the X to match the A. Here we go. Premise 1, UI. Now if I hit UI, it will ask me, please specify the instantial term, i.e. the term to which you wish to instantiate the quantifier phrase for all x. So it's asking me, what do I want to change all my x's to? I want to change it to A, so I type it in, hit enter, and there it changes. Now don't forget, when you UI, you can do it over and over again. So I can re-UI and get uh, a different one. So let's say I want to instantiate it to G for some reason. Oh, okay, fine. It instantiates to G. And I can do it as many times as I want to. No big deal. Well, I don't really care for that line, so I'm just going to get rid of it, but it's just to remind you that you can UI over and over again. Now I'll now UI premise 2, and I do it the exact same way, premise 2 UI, and it will ask, what do I want to instantiate to? I say A, because that matches my G predits together, and now I'm ready to do some basic moves. Okay, so I will do some modus ponens, and I will quickly get uh, what I want for the derivation. I now have a g of a, and I have an h of a, and I want this. So first I put them together, so I have 6 and 7, a, d, j, and of course it asks me in which direction do I want to adjoin them, and I pick the one that I want, and now I'm ready to existentially generalize. Now, EG in Logic 2010 is um, interesting because there's so many options that you can do. When I EG this, in fact, there's four options. I can e generalize both instances of A, just the left conjunct, the right conjunct, and no conjuncts. So, it will actually ask me what I want to do. Here it says, please specify the free occurrences of the term on which you wish to generalize by highlighting each such occurrence and pressing Alt-1. So, if I want to generalize both instances of A, I highlight 1, and then I hit Alt-1. And I highlight the other, and I hit Alt-1. And so what the program has done is it has replaced A with the placeholder, which is the set bracket 1 bracket. And so now the program knows that I'm generalizing both those variables. So I can now hit OK. Then it asks me which variable do I want to change in the generalization. So here I want the generalization to be to x, so I hit x and click OK, and there we go, it generalized. Now just to show you that again, if I take 8 and eg, let's say I actually only wanted to generalize the first one. I would hit Alt-1 for the a on g and click OK, and let's say I wanted to generalize it to the letter z. Now I get the phrase, there exists a z, gz, and h, a. Notice that I was successful in just generalizing the first A into an existential Z. So when you EG, always remember the program will ask you what you want to select, and then you are able to specify which letter you wanted to go to. Now obviously I don't want this line, so I will delete it. Uh, and over here, I actually realize this is exactly what I wanted, so I can add the um, direct derivation to the end. And, well... Oops, I have to do that again. So I'll highlight alt one, alt one, okay, to x, and direct derivation, and that closes that. 
Now to finish the proof, all I need to do is uh, close out the consequent here. So I show the consequent under the assumption of FA, and now I'm ready to say on line 3, I did a conditional derivation. Enter. Done. Check. Looks good. Save it, and then submit it uh, if it was on an assignment. This is derivation 3.010. In this demonstration, I will show you how to do a universal derivation as well as existential instantiation, and I will show you a couple handy shortcuts. So, to begin, I can show a conclusion. Now, I want to set up my universal derivation immediately. Why? Because my show line is of a universal for all x, fx, and what I should do is show an instantiated version. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is to right-click, and there's a really handy show instantiation box. If you click it, it automatically shows the instantiation from for all x to fx, and that's actually a really nice shortcut. You could also have just typed in show inst uh, instead of using the right-click box. Now, the other way to do this is to do it the old-fashioned way, which is to type show here, and then to type in fx, uh, or to right-click and do it manually by clicking the uh, fx here. Um, it's fine, but the show inst is quite handy. Okay, now that we've set that up, we use the golden rule. Premise 1 is a universal, premise 2 is an existential, so I'll take premise 2 and EI. Premise 2 and EI. When I do that, just like a UI, a box pops up and it asks me what I want to instantiate to, so I'll pick a new arbitrary letter. Great. Uh, notice, though, that if I had actually tried to pick something that's not arbitrary, like X, it would say x is not a new variable. Why? Because it appears somewhere above me in the proof, so that's no good. So I need to pick something new, i, j, k, etc. Another handy shortcut I can use for any instantiation is instead of hitting enter, so here I'll show you, if I hit enter here, it tells me to pick i, and that's fine, and I type it in. But actually a shortcut is to write slash and then the letter that you want to instantiate to. So here I wrote slash i, and it will do the instantiation for me automatically. I'll demonstrate that in my UI move, which I'll do now. Premise 1, I'd like to UI. First, I'm going to UI it to X, and so I'm going to pick X, and that's fine. But I'm also going to UI to I to match with line 3. And we can see that when I type premise 2, if I hit UI and I type slash I, it will... premise 1 UI to I it will forego the menu and pop up as fi by conditional p. Now the rest of this proof is trivially easy. I'm just going to do some by conditional conditional and to modus ponens. Uh, let's uh, sort of set them up. So that's by conditional conditional. I'll do the same here, by conditional conditional, and I'm ready to go. 3 with 7 is a modus ponens. That gives me p. And then 6 and 8 is another modus ponens. That gives me fx. That's nice. Direct derivation. Done. From here, I just need to close off my universal derivation. Notice that I wanted to show a universal. I was able to show an instantiation of it. So now I can say line 2, universal derivation, done. Check. Looks good. Save. Submit. OK, that's a demonstration of some of the new features and shortcuts in Logic 2010. With this, you should be able to do all of the predicate logic symbolizations.